Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka. I welcome you all to this session on Java projects. In this session, we will be discussing three useful projects which are based on core and advanced Java concepts. The projects that I will be discussing today are ATM machine which is based on core Java concepts, text editor that is based on swings and applets, and the sign up form which will make use of servlets and JSP concepts. Without wasting any further time, let's get started. First, ATM machine. All of you know what is ATM and how it works, but implementing the same using core Java concepts is something interesting. So let's see how to do that. Here we will be developing the code for user account details, bank account, and then further we will perform few operations like deposit the amount, withdraw, check the balance, etc. Basically, it's based on core Java concepts and is developed using Eclipse. So all that you require is your Java install that is your JDK and JRE and you just need to have Eclipse installed on your machine. Let me tell you one important thing that is I have set the privileges for account number and password. That is you can see on the screen that I have given two account numbers and passwords while running the code. If you give the account number and password as mentioned on the screen only then you can do the further operations else it will just display a message saying wrong account number or pin. Now let's see how it works and how the code is being developed. So basically when you run the code, this is how your console appears and it asked me to enter the account number. That will be the one which I mentioned on the screen and the password is going to be this thing enter. So when you enter this, it will ask you to select the account you want to access. That is whether your checking account, your saving account, etc. So first I will say type one that is checking account. So in the checking account, the operations that you can do is you can waive the balance, you can withdraw funds, you can deposit the funds. So let's see how much balance is there in my account. It's zero, is it? Now I want to deposit the funds in the checking account. So how will I do that? Again checking account. Option three, which is deposit funds. So it's asking me amount you want to deposit from checking account. So I say I want to deposit some 10,000. Enter. So you can see here the new checking account balance is 10,000. Correct? Again, I will choose checking account and now I want to withdraw the amount from the checking account. So I'll say option two and I'll say I want some 5,000 from that account. So you can see here I've withdrawn 5000 and the new checking account balance will be 5000. So this implies I have withdrawn 5000 from the account. Again, I will choose option one. I will view the balance. So it says 5000 is remaining. Correct. Now we'll go to savings account and again view the balance and do the same operations. Balance is zero. Again, same thing. I want to withdraw some funds like say 4000. It says 4000 and now I want to withdraw some funds say some 5000. Let's see what it says when the amount that we want to withdraw is more than the amount which is in the bank account. It says balance cannot be negative. Correct. So when you try to access more amount than which is there in the bank account like the savings account, it says balance cannot be negative. Similarly, you cannot just enter the negative values into this. Now say I want to just withdraw some 2000 and it says the new saving account balance will be 2000. So basically this is how you can do operations like same way you do it on your ATM machines. And now I want to just say I want to exit. So suppose if I enter invalid account number, say I'll enter something like this and I'll give the pin something. It says wrong customer number or pin number. That is I have set the privileges only for those two account credentials so that I can access using only those two numbers. You can even include more account numbers and pins. I'll show you how to do that. So basically this is all about the working of ATM machine. Let's take a look at the code now. So here in Edureka one package, I have created three Java files. One is for account, one is ATM and one is option menu. So now let's see why we have three files for ATM and how it works. First we'll see option menu. So you can see here, option menu extends account class that is this Java class. I'm just reading a money format that will be in decimal and then I'm creating a hash map of integer and then I'm creating a variable of type hash map and giving a reference for that. 
So basically the first thing that I want to do is I want to validate the login information that is customer number and pin number as I have already told you that I have set the privileges for two numbers that is these two account numbers and pins if you want more you can just copy this data dot put paste it and you can change like whatever you want you can add more number of privileges like this so the first step when you execute it will just say welcome to ATM project and enter your customer number correct so first what you will do you will enter either of these customer numbers and then it will ask for pin number I am reading the customer number and pin number using menu input dot next end. So in case if you enter some characters, it has to catch an exception, correct? So what it will do? It will say invalid characters and it will ask you to enter only numbers because I have set the privileges only for numbers. So in this for loop, I'm trying to check whether the entered customer number and pin number is correct or not. If it is not correct, it will print saying wrong customer number or pin number that you already saw in the output. So after that, if the entered credentials are correct, then this method will execute. That is the get account type. In this get account type, I have mentioned these choices that is select the account you want to access, checking account, saving account choice, etc. And then using the switch case, I am using get checking, get saving methods. If you press exit, it will say thank you for using the ATM. Bye. And in the default choice, if you press the choice that is not correct, it will say invalid choice. So here is the get checking and I have defined the method over here that is get checking. So what all we had in the get checking method view balance, withdraw funds, deposit funds, exit. Correct. Now I'm reading everything that is account balance using money format, withdraw input, deposit input, and everything will be in get account type method. Correct. And obviously case 4 will be your exit. So it will just print saying thank you for using the ATM Bye. now similarly for savings account that is view balance withdraw funds deposit funds etc. Again, we are using switch case to print the saving account balance saving withdraw input saving deposit input everything. So this is all about your option menu class. Now we will see what is there in account class. So here it is just required to set the customer number and set the pin number that is first you set the customer number and return customer number and then you set the pin number and return the pin number. So basically account class is to retrieve all the details that is being set in option menu that is your checking balance saving balance your withdraw input deposit funds everything that has been mentioned in option menu class. So you can see here that I have checking balance method and I'm returning the same and again I have saving balance. So here you can calculate the checking account withdrawal that is checking balance equals to checking balance minus account and then it will return the same that is we saw that when we want to withdraw 2000 from 4000 it will say the new saving balance will be 2000 similarly the same thing will be here that is saving balance minus amount like that. So similarly you can calculate the account deposit the saving account deposit that is the balance plus the amount that you enter suppose say the saving balance is zero and if you enter 2000 so it will add and it will return the balance. Similarly the same thing with this as well that is account withdraw input and customer saving account withdraw input as well and then it will just check the deposit amount same thing for savings as well and I have initialized all these variables as private because I want them to be local to the class. So this is how it works and now coming to the last file that is atm.java. So here this class extends option menu and option menu extends account. So what atm should do it should obviously extend option menu and I'm just creating an object of option menu and just trying to get the login from option menu. So when I execute again it works same. It will ask same thing again. If I enter something, it says wrong customer pin or account number. As I have told, if I enter something else apart from the numerics, it says invalid characters only numbers. That is the exception that I have thrown. So this is all about the ATM project. I hope you understood it. Now let's move further and see the text editor. So here I'm making use of Java swings. That is, I will be using J text area menu bar, J menu bar, etc. And all the menu items will have action listener to detect any action. And as I have told, it makes use of Java applet and swing concepts. And similarly, all that you just need is a Java installed and the Eclipse ID. 
we can say like we can perform all the operations like we perform in your wordpad or your notepad and it is very efficient so now let's see how it works so first let's execute and see how it works and then i will explain you the code so you got a text editor here you can see you have file and it consists of all the operations like new open save exit and you have edit option like cut copy and paste you have font like bold plain italic and you have size like up to 28 and you have font type that is roman helvetica arial courier century etc and also you can set the background and foreground color and you can undo and redo the operations now let's see each of them how it works so i want to say like welcome to edureka youtube channel and enjoy learning now suppose i want to change the font of this i'll capture everything like control a and then i'll give font like bold so you can see here it became bold say suppose i want it to be italic you can see even that became italic as well i want to increase the font size like 28 it got done i want to change the font type to century even that happened say i want helvetica I want Times Roman even that happened. Say I want a color to give for that like background color in something like say I want red. Okay? You can see the background color is red. So I want to remove the background color now. Now I'll change the font color to be Say I want to enter some more text like I did as Java projects and I want to undo that I can just press control Z and it goes on removing all that thing and control 5 for whatever i have deleted you can see it's going on also you can create a new file that i just did also if you want to open something that is already present you can open from the libraries also if i want to save this i can save it like however i want in the downloads or in desktop wherever you want you can save the file by giving save it it will be saved i can enter something and again if i want to save it it will be saved like applet 1 similarly you can even check that whether it is being saved or not so in desktop you can see it is being saved as applet and applet 1 so basically this is all about your text editor as how it works like you can perform all the operations like edit font file color undo redo everything etc sounds interesting let's see what is the code behind this now So here you can see a undoable text area that extends the text area and implements state editable. Why it implements state editable is because we have defined the editable class in which we can edit all the options like I showed you on the text editor. So you can see here I have given the key state as undoable text area key and then I have declared the current edit and undo manager. and the first undoable text area I have defined it in various ways. The first thing it is zero parameterized and then in the next i have defined some parameters like string and i have given it in super as well and then i have used rows and columns and then i have used string along with rows and columns and then string rows columns and scroll bars as well so in various ways i have declared this undoable text area constructor so if in case something happens you are stuck and you cannot undo some operations that you have performed then automatically the exception will be catched here and next same for redo as well if you cannot perform any redo operations then it again catches an exception you might be wondering why it need to catch an exception correct it's just because to maintain the normal flow of execution so that your further operations will not be interrupted and next to store the state and restore the state that i have given i am using the key state as a variable and for the snapshot method i am giving like condition if the text is being changed then use undo and add edit to edit the current state and now i am declaring the init undoable and giving some new reference variables for undo manager and current edit and i am adding the key listener for new adapter and then i am using the focus listener to focus the event that was being captured and similarly for text listener as well if the value is changed it has to say that the text is being changed and now you can see there's a text editor class which undoable text area has extended and this i'm declaring few parameters like frame file dialog font etc 
and now here comes the text editor parameters like say courier at style at size everything and here I have used the option menu bar that is times Roman Helvetica Arial, century etc and I have given one one parameters for each of them and then using the add method I'm adding all of them like appending it to the menu and we have to use the action listener to detect any action that is being performed so similarly for bold plain italic menu that all we saw and again using action listener we are calling that event and then I'm declaring all the sizes over here that you saw like till 28 and appending it using the add method and to detect them I'm using add action listener even for new open save exit again using action listener for all them and for cut copy paste edit options as well for background and foreground color and for color for undo redo for everything it all remains the same and then I'm implementing the action listener class to invoke that method correct like for undo and redo and similarly for file name untitled for select menu everything so whatever the options we have seen here they all have to implement the action listener class so you can see I'm detecting save else what happens the action will not be detected you can see again for exit as well for read file everything and even cut copy paste for everything we have to use action listener classes even the size class implements action listener like for size 10 size 12 for 14 16 18 similarly till 28 that's all and then I'm extending an applet class and implementing the action listener even for this in bold I want courier font everything and even in plain I want the same thing so as you can see if I type anything here so it is by default courier correct so that's what is here that is in get action command in bold plain and italic whatever it is the first thing is courier correct and then comes the type that is times Roman Helvetica courier Arial, black century everything and then again I am choosing the color that is the background or foreground colors and then I'm implementing the main method and setting the size of the text editor to 800 and 600 so that's how it works like you can perform any operations on text editor and do rest everything now let's move further and see the sign up form which is developed using surfless JSP and web development tools like HTML CSS etc so I'm just going to create a basic sign up form and all that you need is servlets, Java server pages, Apache Tomcat server, and cascading style sheets, and Eclipse for Enterprise Edition. And it's very easy to develop as I'll be showing you how. So first, let's run the output and check, and then I will explain you the backend code. Make sure that you run on server. My Tomcat server is starting now. So this is the sign up form that we have created. You can enter the name. I'll give some email like 13 or older is my option. So here in the sign up form you can see your name, email, password, your age. I'll give some biography like I am a footballer, singer, swimmer, etc. Like just my hobbies. I can give my education. Everything you can give. Like it's not mandatory that it should be the same thing. And the job role have so many options in web, mobile, business, and others. So I'm very interested in iOS developers, so I'll give that. And interests are in development, design, business, everything. And when I sign up, it says, Hi Chris, welcome to Edureka. Because the sign up that I have done got saved. So where will be the output? Like, or where you can see the details that you have entered in the back end. In this console tab, you can see the details that you have entered that is your name your email ID your password your over 13 your biography your job role your interest etc so that's all was there in the form so you can see here in this form these are the basic information that has been given so now let's take a look at the backend code in the sign up, I have created five files like HTML for creating a form, CSS file to add some beauty or makeup to the form that we have created. We have servlet class files like request post form and person1.java class. And then to retrieve the data from the servlets, we have the JSP file. And also we have the web.xml file to add the mappings to the servlet. 
and we have JSP file to retrieve the data from the servlets. So for this front end that is your sign up form we have used HTML. You can see here that I have linked with CSS as well that is for giving some makeup to the file that is you can say beauty to the form that you have created. I'm giving form action as request post form and method will be post. So here you can see in the label you have created like name email password age your under 13 or about 13 whatever it is and then for your profile or your biography you have created one more label tag and giving the text id is equal to bio and name is equal to user bio and for the job roles there are so many so you have created a first label for job role and the first opt group label will be web in web you have so many options and again, you are closing that and opening one more op group label that will be your mobile, your business, your secure, your other. So same things. And then for your interest, like this one, you can see you have checkboxes over here. Correct? For that checkboxes, we have given the class type, value, everything. Like for development, for design, for business, everything. And last, it will be the submit button that will be your sign up. So this is how your index.html file will be and now coming to main.css file for each and everything I have given the paddings like the font family the color the maximum width the margin background everything even for the first thing that will be the h1 I have aligned it to center you can see here I have aligned it to center and that is an h1 even for that I have given the specified color and the font family as well and coming down for form as well and for all these things, I'm using a select type for background, border, font size, height, margin, outline, padding, width, color, everything. Even for the box shadow as well, you can see there's a shadow for this box. It's not just a simple one. And even for the checkboxes, for buttons that is present as well, for field set, for legend tags, for label, for number tags, everything. So this will be your main.css. Now let's take a look at the servlet classes. So first what I'm doing here is I'm extending a HTTP servlet class. Correct and I'm using a do post method and declaring parameters for request and response. And I'm requesting all the parameters that is your username, email, password, age, biography, job and for your user interest again the same thing. And then I'm creating an object of person and trying to retrieve all the details and then I'm trying to request and set the attribute of my person and then using the dispatcher. I'm trying to request the get request dispatcher from JSP and obviously in the dispatcher dot forward you will be having a response and request both of them. So as I have created the object, let's see what is there in the person in this. It's nothing but it will retrieve all the details that is. I have made everything as private because I want it to be a private to the person class and this class is called as a bean class. I'll tell you why I have made a constructor of person one and then using the parameterized constructor. I'm trying to reference and retrieve all the details. You can see like for get name method. I'm returning the name and set name. I'm retrieving again for get email and set email methods for get password for get page set age for bio job roles interest everything. This is nothing but uh, defining a constructor and retrieving the details and request post form is essential to send a request and response and then person one dot Java is essential to retrieve the details and then as I have told it is requesting a dispatcher to login one. So in the login one dot JSP class I have imported the bean class that is edureka dot person one. Why because edureka is my package and person one is my class. And then I'm giving the scope as request and similarly as I have imported the bean class and similarly to redirect it to the next page. I have used a small icon and you can say that it says welcome to Edureka. So this is all about the JSP and then now coming to the last file that is web.xml. You have to add mappings to the file. You can give servlet name like anything but make sure you give the servlet class name very properly that is it should be like edureka that is your package and your request post form which is your class name. This should be very correct and then for URL pattern that is request post form URL. 
this should be same as the one which you give in form action tab that is your request post form url or else it will result in an error so this is all about the sign up form i hope you understood how it works so that's all for the session if you want to have a source code or the files of this explanation and all you can just comment your email ids in the comment section below don't worry we won't expose your email ids for security purpose we will contact you and send all the source code and files to the given email ids that's all for the session thank you and have a nice day